Hi guys, it's Eva here and welcome to Rich Social Worker. Today's video is a little bit different. Um, it's actually an interview and I'm so excited. I was recently traveling in the States. You know, I live in Jamaica, which is where I am now. It's gorgeous, it's beautiful. Um, but I was recently in the States and I got to sit down with a fellow social worker, a fellow starting block sister. We attended the same Leadership Institute together and her name is Anim. Awe. Um, she is a pri she's in private practice. She also has another full-time job at the hospital. Um, she is an entrepreneur and has a t-shirt line and she also is an author. She's written a children's book. So we had such a good time with this interview. You're gonna see like we literally met five minutes before the interview, like physically face to face. Before then we've been communicating online. So you're gonna see all the excitement that we had in that moment when we met when you watch this interview. There's so many great gems that she shares and I'm so excited to share it with you. Make sure <laughs> you know the drill. Like, subscribe, uh, put on the notification bell, comment, all of these things. But first, before we get into the interview, roll the credits. everybody um, welcome back this is Eva Ford with Rich Social Worker and I'm so excited today because I'm joined by Anim Awe and um, we so here's here's the magic of networking and the internet and Facebook and all of these things um, we actually are in the same uh, we went to the same leadership institute yeah. starting block um, different institutes but I, I put out a call, I suppose, in the group to say, hey, are there actually any other social workers in here? And any responded. And um, as I'm traveling in the States during this time, we happen to be in the same area. So I'm really excited, I'm excited to, be to, to, to be talking to you today and um, to have you on the channel. And as I said, you know, my goal with the channel Rich Social Worker is to inspire social workers and, and to show that you know, this, this narrative about, you know, we don't make money and social workers can't make money and, and you, you know, this idea that you maybe have to sacrifice some part of your life, some part of happiness or some part of fulfillment in one area to be able to be fulfilled as a social worker in another, boulder dash. All right, so Anim is here with us today. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for having me. And tell us a little bit more about yourself and I just want to get into... Um, your journey. Sure. Yeah. Sure. Um, so again, I'm Anim Awe. I'm a licensed clinical social worker. I'm licensed in the state of California, Massachusetts, and soon to be here in Georgia where I'm residing. I actually work from home, and we'll talk about that a little later, some of the flexibility that comes with being a social worker. And um, I have a very small private practice where I see people completely online. And again, when we talk about flexibility, I see all my clients online from the comfort of my own home. Um, I also do some medical social work in the hospitals because it can be very lucrative. And again, we're going to kind yeah. of explore, their, explore those options as well. So um, my full-time job, I do work for insurance. I'm a utilization manager. So I... Um, I basically consult with all the major hospitals and facilities, drug treatment facilities, inpatient mental health facilities. They contact me and um, let me know they have one of our members. And so based on the clinical information, I'll let them know if they're meeting clinical medical criteria rather for that continued stay. So it's a cool job. You get exposed to everything from mm -hmm. eating disorders to like ticks to, you know, diagnoses you have only barely explored in you know school so I yeah. get I get exposed to everything so it's really cool I learn a lot um, and I just try to keep myself busy with different little projects that I have um, I have a t-shirt line therapy over silence where I'm looking to yeah. get really I saw people. that I love it Thank you. just trying to spread that. the word I think in our communities yeah. particularly Caribbean African American we have this notion where we don't talk about our issues yeah. and we're taught to kind of you know, internalize everything, mm -hmm. keep everything in the home, mm -hmm. not get help when you mm -hmm. actually need it. So Therapy Over Sounds really aims to kind mm -hmm. of undo that mm -hmm. narrative. I loved it. And Love so it. I got okay. I gave a shirt to my mom and I kinda of explained it to her. So that was a breaking moment. Well, really pivotal moment for me in my life. So uh -huh. um 
yeah, just do a lot of different yeah. things and again just try to disrupt this narrative of yeah. being a broke social yeah. worker because that's just yeah. not me and not my lifestyle. <laughs> so so here's the thing though, because uh, so my first question to you is this. What does being a rich social worker mean to you? Oh, I, that's a good question. I think being a rich social worker means being rich in skill set and mm-hmm. like being it. rich in opportunities, especially at this mm-hmm. clinical level. Like, you don't have to settle for any job. Mm-hmm. You don't have to settle for any just role. The options are out there. And mm-hmm. I always tell social workers, like, there's just so many options out there. Mm-hmm. And especially when you reach that clinical level that – you know, you don't have to settle. I think being rich in, you don't have to subscribe to that norm of what they told us in grad school that, you know, if you're you're in social work, you're not doing this for the money. Well, I can make money and do good work as well. And that's where I'm at in my career. Like, mm-hmm. I'm going to do great work. Every day I leave my job or, you know, log off from my computer feeling mm-hmm. empowered and feeling that I know that I've helped people mm-hmm. or got on their nerves because it doesn't always go in their favor. Mm-hmm. But being rich in those areas and, mm-hmm. you know, financially be able to fund my lifestyle. Mm-hmm. I love it. So, mm-hmm. so, and what do you do? Because you said you're in different things. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and you know what? Let me back up. <laughs> Let's talk about therapy over silence. Sure. I love that so much. Thank you. And, and one of the things that I love, too, is you have, you have models modeling the shirts, shirts, and a few of the models are men. Yes. Which I love. Right. Because I agree. I mean, we know therapy is not always um, embraced, right. uh, especially in, in communities of color, but especially, especially with men. Absolutely. Um, do, you, do you have anything to say about that? Well, I think when we think of like toxic masculinity, and I think what that is, that's a, pro- a byproduct of being told that a man doesn't do certain things. And I also wrote a book, Elijah Was Brave. I wish I wore my t-shirt and had my book, but... We're- I mean, it's, I can grab it, but I we'll, don't we'll, 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 we'll get, we'll get it. that. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and so Elijah was brave. It really came out of this idea that, again, for our communities, we, especially with the child, when ch- children usually display when they're like emotionally disturbed, mm-hmm. and sometimes we miss it as, you know, miss those signs, or mm-hmm. we just, you know, write it off as them being kids. And mm-hmm. I think that's what I wrote the book for, to normalize that, you know, sometimes kids do have emotional disturbances, and sometimes they do need a professional, and it's okay. Mm-hmm. And so Elijah Was Brave really came out of that. So when I think about, you know, toxic masculinity and, you know, forcing men or little boys to shun their emotions mm-hmm. or bottle everything in, it comes out as a result of that. So I really wrote that book out of a place of trying to just normalize that boys go through things, boys and girls, but mm-hmm. for, for whatever reason, I focused on boys. Well, tell us a little bit about the book. Yeah, so Elijah is like a six-year-old boy, and he's in elementary school, and he really starts to have behavioral concerns, and I think mm-hmm. that's, a real, that's a really sort of indicator for some, you know, for, for young boys, you know, they, they tend to express their depression in Mm -hmm. ways of aggression and anger. Mm -hmm. So Eliza's acting up in school, he's hitting, he's fighting, he's getting to all these issues in school and finally the principal pulls him aside and he just like kind of has a moment with the principal the principal is like, you know what, I'm going to refer you over to in-home therapy because I used to be in-home therapist as well. Mm -hmm. And just like they bring in the family, mm-hmm. they walk the family through the process, just the process of like referrals mm-hmm. and, you know, starting, open up a case, how that looks I like. Love so this. it really just like normalizes this process for the family yeah. and kind of just like, you know, and it brings the family together because, you know, with, especially with children, you cannot address child a child's issue without bringing in the family, right? Because who's mm-hmm. going to reinforce it? That Absolutely. We need the family, we need the parents Absolutely. to step in. So it really kind of just goes through that process. Absolutely. Is this a children's book? It's a children's book. I can't. Book. I can't. And wait. it has a little journal component too, a couple pages for the little ones. But I really encourage families to read together because yeah. it's a it's an experience for everybody. Mm-hmm. Like it, it's some it's a learning curve for everyone. So I think mm-hmm. I encourage families to sit with their little ones and read together. Mm-hmm. I love the little one to read too. All right. So what gave you the? No, that's not what I want to ask. Mm-hmm. Where did this uh, maybe desire or insistence on? tapping into your creativity. Where did that come from? Yeah. And, and I ask specifically because I believe that, you know, when I came into social work, it was really a blessing for me because I was in school two mm-hmm. years undecided. And when I found social work, it was like, this is what I'm supposed to be yeah. doing. Um, but I think my identity became so wrapped up in being a social worker yeah. that it took me a while to 
get to my create creative yeah. side. And I think I think that for a lot of social workers, that's also the case. Absolutely. We're so identified as being, I'm you know, what do you do or who are you? I'm a social worker. Yeah. And the opportunities, however, are so broad for you to tap in because I think social work is such a great foundation it is. for everything for else. For especially everything. if you're well, I was gonna say especially if you're a creative person, but I, I do believe we're all creative in some ways. So I believe that when we as social workers tap into our creativity, that's when we get to really blow up the potential of yeah. social work. Do you know what I mean? Absolutely. So you've got therapy over silence. Yeah. You've got Elijah was brave. Yeah. Like, so where did this, how did you know that you could do this? You could be creative. I didn't and be, know. Um, I, I mean, I went through the same schooling as all, mm -hmm. all you and every other social worker, and but I knew my background was in public health, mm -hmm. right? And I knew well, my parents wanted me to be a medical doctor. I didn't do that, but whatever. Okay. <laughs> uh, and I knew like there was some missing component within my social work aspect, mm -hmm. but I knew social work was heavily related to health and populations mm -hmm. and particularly African Americans because that's what I wrote my application on. And I'm just mm -hmm. like, well, how do I infuse this and with these messages, especially these messages that pertain to our communities. Mm -hmm. And so I was motivated by that. And I, I actually, my Elijah was brave came out of me failing my clinical, clinical mm -hmm. exam. I failed my clinical exam twice, but finally I passed it on my third. So I failed my exam. I was so sad. I'm I sad. failed mine too. Like, <laughs> okay, happens. no shame. There's no shame. That's part of the process. Yeah. And, um, I, I was working in dialysis, and I'm just like, man, there's so many black people in this dialysis, because black and Latinos, you know, they lead the way in hypertension, and they, they never want to talk about therapy, because I was a medical social worker, and, you know, part of my role was to do psychotherapy, brief psychotherapy with the clients, and nobody wants to talk about their feelings, I'm just like, man, there's, there's, there's a trend here, like, and then I just, the kind of idea came out of that and just addressing the gaps really mm -hmm. and I mean you that's that's the beauty in social work like mm -hmm. we have so many opportunities to be creative in the mm -hmm. way we approach our clients how mm -hmm. we support our clients how we intervene mm -hmm. with our clients so mm -hmm. um it just came to me suddenly I'm just like let me write a book and I didn't see anything else out there so again working from the gaps I I love it I I just I didn't see anything out there at that mm -hmm. time when I wrote the book almost three years ago now you'll see a whole bunch but mm -hmm. <laughs> you're the trendsetter <laughs> Um, I, I love like it. To use the word, I love it. I love it. I'll yeah, use the word thank for you. you. No problem. Yeah. Um, okay. Yeah. yeah. So and, and so I used to teach social work, and that was the thing that I would say to people. And since we're talking about books, you can pick up a copy of How Not to Practice Social Work. Um, <laughs> so that's a book that I wrote, and I wrote it. That came out of my teaching experience, teaching social workers, and being a coordinator for the field experience. Oh, yeah. uh, which was part of it. Job. It's a big job. <laughs> and uh, but it gave me a great opportunity to see the the in more detail how we as social workers can actually um or are are responsible, I, I say, for leaving a place better off. Even if you're on your field experience. Right. Make an impact. You know and tap into your creativity. I, I believe that's, like I said before, that's really where we get to shine and mm -hmm. kind of blend our social work practice with who we are. Yeah, whatever you're passionate about. Whatever you're passionate about. Okay, so can you talk a little bit about um, some of the things that you do mm -hmm. for self-care? Mm -hmm. And I ask that because I, again, believe that this idea of living a rich life yeah. includes self-care. Absolutely. Absolutely. You have to you have to believe for me that fulfillment is possible. Absolutely. That um, and fulfillment in terms of yeah, having the money that you want, having the free time that you want, connecting with the people that you want to connect to, having access to the things that you want to have access to. Um, in the way that you want to. That doesn't necessarily mean everybody has to be a millionaire or billionaire, right. but just to have that. And self-care is a part of that. So are you? can you share yeah. with us? I'm, I'm still trying to get better at mm -hmm. that. But, mm -hmm. I mean, one of the prime examples, yes. yesterday was my birthday. I called out of work because I wanted to be free to enjoy my birthday. Yeah. And it's just small things like that. Yeah. I think sometimes when we think of self-care, it means that people think like going to the spa every day. Yeah. It may not be practical for yeah. anyone. 
or some people. Um, but I called out of work yesterday. Yeah. And it felt so good. Yeah. I just got to lay in my bed and I have to you know, rush downstairs to go on my computer. Yeah. Um, I I travel. Mm -hmm. I used to travel way more, but I'm like getting older and I'm just tired of traveling. <laughs> but like I travel, I go on vacations. I make it a priority to get to somewhere at least every three months mm -hmm. to be on a beach. For me, I love to be by the ocean. And Come to sun. Jamaica. Oh, I will. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> we, we can talk about that. Yes. yes. Um, <laughs> Um, I, I watch trash TV. Okay. Um, bad reality TV yeah. shows really is an escape for me sometimes. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, one therapist actually told me it's because it's a reflection of my life. But, uh, uh -huh. We won't go there. <laughs> but, <laughs> it's another episode. But um, yeah, trashy TV is really yeah. good. I love Real Housewives of Atlanta. Uh -huh. I live in Atlanta now. I'm just yeah. like, oh my God, I love these girls. I wish we were friends. And yeah. like, it really just makes me feel like I have friends on TV. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it's small, but like it's inexpensive. It's yeah. practical. Like you don't yeah. got to move much. Yeah. But for me, that's what I do. Yeah. Or go for a walk, go for the go to yeah. the gym. Yes. Um and just sometimes I just walk around my house. I'm just yeah. like, Oh my god, I have a house, this is so yeah. great. And, and just practice be gratitude and gratitude, yeah. like just you know, grounded in yeah. this and just being so thankful. And yeah. Just reminding myself, even when I'm hectic stressed at work, I just have to take a step back sometimes, take a deep breath, I'm just like, I'm thankful for this opportunity. Yeah. It's okay that I'm stressed out, it's okay yeah. that these people are getting on my nerves and yeah. but I'm grateful. Yeah. And then I can come back in and just be refreshed. Yeah. And yeah. getting eight hours of sleep every night is prominent for me. That's I don't I don't mess with my sleep. Yeah, this is gold. <laughs> this is really gold. And and what I love about the first thing you said was you're still working on it. Yeah, I don't got it all figured out. Yeah, even as a licensed clinical therapist, yeah. I don't have it all figured. Yeah, out. <laughs> that's important too because um, <laughs> I think I think just a lot of times we we think that okay. I have to do self care. I have to do this. I have to do. This. You want to be perfect at everything, and yeah. even I admit I may be guilty of uh, that. May be the perception, but right. but the reality is we're all still figuring this out yeah, for ourselves. For ourselves, but you said some very practical things. Mm -hmm. um, I walk, and I found that walking for me is just so like I I have to walk mm -hmm. now. Like I. I have to. Yeah. I don't care what's going on. It's like, mm, don't mess with me in my walk. Yeah, that's because that's that's for me. That's yeah. my time. Um, I gotta get my sleep. Yeah. Um, but that's probably for other people. You don't want to see me if I haven't slept. Yeah. Um, <laughs> same, same, same. <laughs> Not very nice. Uh, yeah. Um. All right. So 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 thanks for that. Um. So oh, cooking uh, too is another thing. Really? Yeah, just it's really relaxing. Oh. I'm like, that's good. Um, yeah, like that creating all these. Yeah, we're not the, we're not alike at all in that. That stresses me. <laughs> but I do it all the time. But like, yeah, no, that's never never for me. That will never be on my list. I shouldn't say that. Um, okay, so last thing as we as we close up, mm -hmm. um, you're fairly young. Um, <laughs> happy happy belated thank birthday. You, thank you. And um, but so my question is, what do you see if you can see anything? Um, for yourself for the future mm -hmm. when it comes to either maintaining or continuing to build on this rich life yeah yeah um, no longer working for anyone else but myself yeah um, unfortunately with just the systems that a lot of us tend to work in myself included they they tend to they can run us ragged mm -hmm. and they, they want us to produce, get mm -hmm. numbers, get numbers, and that's not sustainable for the life that I want. And mm -hmm. although I am thankful, I know long term that that isn't a part of what I want mm -hmm. um, to continue living this rich life. Because part of being rich is being rich internally, too, and taking mm -hmm. care of myself and my mind. Um, Absolutely. Yeah, and just creating a space and opportunity for mm -hmm. like young, up and coming social workers, particularly social workers of color, to just be reminded that you can make money, too, and you can live. I life. love it. I, I do believe that it's important for us yeah. to like have these conversations with them because they're not hearing that in school. Yeah. Like literally exactly. the first thing I heard in grad school, first day of school was like, if you're here to make money you're in the wrong field. That was the first thing like one of my professors said. I'm just like, oh, that's not what God told me. So he sent me here for a reason, right? Mm -hmm. So yeah, just reminding those, mm -hmm. you know, those up and coming folks mm -hmm. that you can make money, you can live a good life. Mm -hmm. You don't always have to look to nursing or medicine and no disrespect to any of them. Those are great fields. They work really, really, right. really hard because I work with them. But um mm -hmm. that wasn't for me. Mm -hmm. And I'm I'm happy where I'm at and I'm so thankful. I'm mm -hmm. so thankful that, you know, things have just worked out for me. Mm -hmm. But like it's 
it's possible and that's just what I want yeah. people to know like it's out there um it may take a little time a little navigation talking to people yeah. but um it's out there yeah it's out there so I any recommendations for for those up and coming social workers on how they can um maybe I wouldn't say speed up that or plug into the process yeah. is what I'm, I'm asking. I would say, um, I always vouch for medical social work. It's very lucrative. Mm -hmm. I'm actually flying back out tonight to um, California because I still work per diem for Kaiser Permanente because it pays so well. Mm -hmm. And I'm just going to pick up a couple shifts and have my mortgage payment. But mm -hmm. like medical social work is really the way to go. So you don't necessarily have to go get a degree in public. Somebody wrote me the other day. I was just like, do I have to get a degree in public health like you did? I'm just like, no, you don't have to. But like, be able to be able to kind of talk about some medical conditions and have some sort of formal understanding. You can read a book about it. You don't have to be diagnosing like the medical doctor or like mm -hmm. mental health diagnosis like we do. Mm -hmm. And get licensed. It's important because like you can, you don't have to, you know, settle for one offer. Like, I think it's very important to get clinical mm -hmm. license, especially as women of color. Mm -hmm. I think that's important. So mm -hmm. it's process. It's mm -hmm. not quick. Mm -hmm. Like I said, I failed twice before I finally passed mm -hmm. on the third time, but I think that is important. And yeah. create tap into that creativity. Like, yeah. Here we are on this show. Yeah. Like <laughs> Yeah. And and so thank you for saying that. I actually have a video up on the channel um asking, do you need your license? But just just for clarification, mm -hmm. um I was referring to a someone who had written in saying that she had failed her exam, mm -hmm. the clinical exam, three times. She thought she needed her license in order to um, create therapeutic spaces right. for people. Right. And they were saying, mm, still work on your license, but you don't necessarily need right. your license to tap into that creativity no. and start that business. No. So definitely if you're working in a clinical, you yeah, get your license. Right. And I think it's easier to get a job. <laughs> and demand top pay. Like, yeah. um, I'm not accepting that because I know what I'm worth and like I know you need me. Oh, <laughs> I know we have to end this conversation, but that's another thing. I will not accept yeah. anything. Right? I, because the other conversation I think is we as social workers have to learn how to demand oh, yeah. pay. Yeah. Because I don't know that. Because you're needed. A lot of health centers need us because yes. like it's medical. Through Medicare, they have to have social workers in their facility, yeah. so they have to appropriate certain funds for us. So they need us. Yeah. So like, you don't give me the right offer, I'm not accepting it. Yeah. I think <laughs> I'm so glad you said that because I think a lot of social workers think, oh, this is what they're paying, so this is what I have no. to accept. No. <laughs> no, 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 no. So, um, thank you so much, Anne. This me. is this is really great. And guys, I don't know. Like we literally just physically met <laughs> right before. But we're starting block sisters. So yeah, we're starting, starting block <laughs> sisters, social workers. Yes. This is this is how we roll. Yeah. So connected. Yeah, <laughs> guys, thanks so much for being here. Um, make sure if you're not already subscribed, subscribe. Hit that notification bell. Share this with your friends. And we will see you. Pick up the book. Yes. Elijah was brave. Yes. www.elijahwasbrave.com. Yes. Or you can go on my website, www.animawelcsw.com. And you can shop Therapy Over Sons. You can shop Elijah was brave. You can talk to me. Um, yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm online. Yay. I'm on Instagram. I love, I love all of this rich social worker <laughs> talk. Yes. Guys, we'll see you again next time. Take care. Bye.